When I first started at Brooks School, I held this expectation that over the next four years, I would undergo this magnificent transformation from a 14-year-old oily, acne-ridden, basement-dwelling goblin that I was into a confident young woman who was also an academic weapon. That being said, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And I definitely didn't know how to find out what I was supposed to be doing. Instead of introducing myself, I would try to avoid people as a whole, which I quickly learned was impossible at a small boarding school. Multiple times a day, someone would greet me with a dreaded, hi, how are you? And I would quietly whisper, hi, and keep walking as fast as I could. All free time was spent hiding in the library, except for lunch, in which I would speed walk across campus, inhale a handful of pasta, and then teleport back in under 10 minutes. As you can probably tell, my social skills left much to be desired. My athletic potential, on the other hand, was much worse. <laughs> on the first day of third soccer practice, I managed to sprain my ankle in the most elegant way possible, jumping on top of a soccer ball. When one obtains an injury, such as a sprained ankle, the suggested method of recovery usually consists of lots of rest and icing. After about a week of sitting and doing nothing, I made the genius decision to attend skate with a date, alone with a sprained ankle. Probably not the icing that they recommended, but unlike soccer, I had been skating since I was four years old. No sprained ankle was going to stop me. That was until I found myself sprawled on the ice five minutes later, hoping that my soccer shorts would cover up the mural of bru bruises that would later form on my thighs. Throughout the fall and winter, multiple family deaths wreaked havoc on my already pretty chaotic life. I turned to video games and YouTube as a coping mechanism, staying up late and trying to distract myself until I would pass out for three or four hours. I spent my days on autopilot, unable to focus or be fully present, essentially a real life zombie. I would isolate myself at school only to come home and isolate myself there too. As spring rolled around, I honestly wasn't sure how I was gonna survive the next three years. September, 2018. Despite everything that had happened the previous year, I still held on to the hope that things would fix themselves all of a sudden. I remember having to reflect on my goals for the year ahead and responding with just wanting to survive without anything else going horribly wrong. As I think about my second year at Brooks, I recognize an amalgamation of minor but very significant moments. I forged a unique connection with a particular couch on the second floor of the academic building and began spending all my free time there instead of the library. This change of location meant many more interactions with teachers and students who had passed by on their way to and from class. Now I would answer the how are you with tired or okay instead of hi. As for sleep, I managed to add another hour to my average, now a whopping four to five hours a night. Perhaps one of my fondest memories of 10th grade was during my winter term course, Still Waters Poetry with Mr. Hale. One chilly morning, my classmates and I were herded into a small white Brooks van and told that we were going to a mystery location. Mr. Hale wasn't going to kill us, right? He had nothing to get out of that. About 45 minutes later, we pulled into the sketchiest looking forest I've ever seen. We piled out of the car and shuffled forward as a group, not sure where we were going or why we were going, but just going. Gunshots. Not knowing at the time that there was a shooting range near the forest, I came to the logical conclusion that we had become the targets of a real life horror movie. I tried to study Mr. Hale's expression, hoping for clarification or to be told that it was all a dream. He did not seem to be freaking out at all and urged us to ignore the noise and keep moving. All right. Not even five minutes later, a short man with an orange tipped cane appears out of nowhere and offers to take us on a guided tour of forest. Stranger danger is more or less common sense, especially after arriving in a sketchy forest in the middle of nowhere with gunshots in the distance. When Mr. Hale said yes to this man's offer, I was absolutely convinced that he had lost his mind. Luckily, things turned out pretty okay, seeing as I'm still alive. 
this experience, along with the sharing of discussing and poetry afterwards, taught me to put more trust in the fact that Brooks teachers have my back and my best interest in mind. Junior year. After spending the previous year getting back on my feet emotionally and academically, it was time to stop just surviving and start thriving. During the fall and winter, I got to be a part of two productions, The Twelfth Night and Beauty and the Beast, both of which greatly challenged me. I struggle with performance anxiety. When asked to sing by myself, my body temperature immediately skyrockets as if I was engulfed in flames. Utter panic would take the form of tightness in my chest as well as a dry throat, which is happening right now, and sometimes minor shaking. On these occasions, I would get extremely frustrated with myself for not being able to just completely ignore it and push through it. Most times, I would try to pretend that nothing was wrong, although I'm pretty sure Mrs. Hill and Mr. Griffith could see the absolute terror in my eyes. With a lot of encouragement and support from them and my castmates, I was not only to able to perform in both productions, but also to create some of my favorite Brooks memories while doing so. Spring 2020. March break ended with the news that moving forward, my schooling would only be online. As a student who learns best through discussions and application of skills, not physically being in the classroom took away that which allowed me to engage with my classes. My teachers, who were trying to navigate the new system, ended up assigning a lot more work for students than they normally would. The combination of not being able to be fully present during Zoom calls and the general focus issues with homework became very overwhelming. As assignments continued to pile up, I watched as my grades dipped more and more, no longer reflecting who I was as a student. I felt like a complete failure, and I didn't want to admit my struggles to anyone, but I realized that I had to communicate with my teachers in order to stay afloat. Over the following weeks, I regularly sent emails with updates about finished work and work left to do. By planning out what I could get done each day and notifying my teachers on any issues, I was able to crawl my way through the last leg of the race. I stand here, a member of the class of 2021 who will graduate in less than a month. I can't say that I went through the perfect magical transformation that I had hoped for, but I also can't say that I haven't changed at all. When I reflect on my time at Brooks, I can see the progress that I've made. Freshman year taught me that progress is pain. As a sophomore, I learned that progress is taking small steps. Junior year showed me that progress is communicating and the ability to show vulnerability. I still struggle quite a lot and that will never go away. But as I continue to struggle, I will also continue to grow. Thank you.